made a row now and a bookmaker has been forced to remove a giant sign overlooking the Celtic Manor course after Monmouthshire Council took them to court. They'd incurred the wrath of the owner of the course, Sir Terry Matthews, as Nick Pallet reports. Standing proud on a hillside in Llanhenoch, it was a marketing coup for the Irish bookmaker that could have brought them priceless publicity via a global television audience. But tonight, Paddy is powerless. Tomorrow, he'll be gone altogether. Standing 15 metres tall and spanning 80 metres, this advertising hoarding can clearly be seen from the Ryder Cup course just over there. But today, a judge ruled that it was in breach of advertising control, and he ordered the letters that spell out Paddy Power must be taken down by noon tomorrow, the rest of the scaffolding dismantled within two days of that. The unofficial advert had incensed the Celtic Manor's owner, Terry Matthews, when he first saw it sprouting on the horizon yesterday. Somebody's trying to Shanghai the, uh, you know, the event and, and put up an advert of some kind. You know, they, they really need permission to do such things. I don't know if they've got permission, but it's wrong to undermine the advertising and promotion that goes on for the Ryder Cup with the European tour. It's simply wrong. I definitely don't endorse it. I think the people are just scum. Monmouthshire Council went to court to gain an injunction to order Paddy Power to remove the sign. They were successful today, but the bookmaker says he doesn't know what all the fuss is about. You know, I think the guy who owns Celtic Manor, I can't remember his name, but he called us scum, which I think went a little bit far, you know. I mean, it's a, it's a sign in the field, is all it is. So um, it'd be interesting to see what the reaction would have been. I mean, I'm sure we got some feedback on that. And I would say it's probably overwhelmingly positive. The whole point of it is to put a smile on people's faces when they walk through the gates, you know, and, and people just go, wow, look at that sign. And, that's, and that was the whole point behind it. I mean, it was, it was half a mile away from the course and all that kind of stuff. And it's, it's by the by now because the, the court has spoken. So-called guerrilla marketing is increasingly being used at major events, but it can go too far. This stunt by a Dutch beer company incensed organisers at the Football World Cup and led to a number of arrests being made. If you're going to approach a guerrilla marketing stunt uh, with, the concept, with the idea of generating international media or attention or press, then you have to be very much aware of the risks. And also now, if you look at the likes of the London Olympics, which are, which are, are heading our way, there's legislation there to protect the interests of the sponsors, who from the very beginning have, have got vast amounts of money invested in, in, in being associated with uh, the likes of the Olympics or the Ryder Cup. Back in Newport, another landowner and businessman say they're also planning an unofficial advert in a nearby field, but will leave it until the last minute to avoid detection. I think it's a bit over the top, really, isn't it? It's, um, it, it is uh, a probably knee-jerk reaction. Um, everybody seems to enjoy themselves in the next couple of days. I, I don't know, I just think that they, they could have left, let, let it go on and maybe earned a few quid out of it. When we heard about Paddy Power, we were quite impressed with um, their initiative. And uh, it seems that we live in a bit of a nanny state at the moment, where uh, any initiative is just stamped on. This isn't the first time Paddy Power has been in trouble over its sign. They removed it from near to the Cheltenham Festival earlier this year. Tonight, the Irish bookies are seeing the funny side, even offering odds of 50 to 1 that the sign's next appearance will be in Sir Terry Matthews' back garden. Hmm. Well, away from the row, earlier this afternoon...